Metal Gear Solid was a critical and commercial success, so it was no surprise that a sequel would be forthcoming, especially for those who sat through the credits to see the bonus ending that left the door wide open for the story to continue. The sequel, with the subtitle Sons of Liberty, was released in 2001, so it made the jump from the PS1 to PS2. The formula hasn't changed, it's still mainly a stealth game, sneaking through areas and avoiding as much confrontation as possible but there's plenty of action thrown in to keep it from being monotonous. It's a good balance, just like its predecessor. New features include first-person aiming. While in the last game you used the first person just for viewing, you can now shoot too, which is very useful, as headshots are now more effective against enemies. You can also walk slowly, using the pressure-sensitive left analog stick, so you can walk over loud surfaces or sneak behind someone without making any noise. While Metal Gear Solid was pretty innovative with enemy soldiers having a field of vision and hearing, being able to recognize footprints and whatnot, the AI was still sometimes laughable. This was improved here. Not only are the enemies more aware of what's going on, but they'll also be in communication with each other. So if you knock someone out cold, HQ will notice that they're not reporting back to them and send reinforcements to investigate. Oftentimes, the backup soldiers will sport riot gear, shielding off your attacks, making it more vital to avoid this shit. Add to that the new caution mode, which follows the alert and evasion modes that make their return. While they're not hunting you down anymore, they're still aware of your presence and the reinforcements are still around. Plus it takes much longer for caution mode to fade than the other two, so you're gonna have to wait it out, which is no fun. So yeah, you want to avoid being spotted. Another addition is the ability to peek around corners while leaning against the wall, which is really useful if you're playing with the radar off. You can also jump out from behind the wall and quickly take cover back behind it. The enemies can do this also. If you're low enough on health, you'll bleed. Your health bar will turn orange and it will decrease gradually. The blood you lose can also lead enemies to you. So either lay down and don't move, your health will regenerate slowly until you're out of the orange, or you can use a bandage and be done with it. Once again, there are three difficulty settings, easy, normal, and hard, plus an unlockable extreme mode. This time though, you can manually turn the radar on and off with any of them, as opposed to it being automatically assigned to certain difficulties. The graphics are improved. Of course, I mean, it's the next generation console from its predecessor, but even by PS2 standards, the visuals are stunning. And there's a lot of attention to detail, including interactive objects, which isn't vital, but still a nice touch. Harry Gregson Williams handles the soundtrack, which for the most part combines orchestral pieces with electronic breakbeat, a very interesting mesh. So while the gameplay has remained faithful to its predecessor, there are still several tweaks that were made for the positive. The story, however, has its ups and downs, but I'll get into more details about that during the walkthrough and at the conclusion. So the game starts out with an impressive looking cutscene of Solid Snake walking along the George Washington Bridge as the opening credits roll. He turns on the stealth camo and leaps off, attached to a bungee cord and lands on a ship passing by. The landing impact damages the camo though. You'll be briefed on the situation through a codec call with Otacon. Two years have passed since the Shadow Moses incident, and since Ocelot sold the specs of Metal Gear Rex, the market is saturated with Metal Gears. The tanker that Snake is infiltrating is transporting the Marines' new model of Metal Gear. And now that Snake and Otacon have formed an anti-Metal Gear group called Philanthropy, the mission here is to sneak inside and bring back photographic evidence of Metal Gear and expose it for the world to see. Since the ship is guarded by unarmed Marines, we are only armed with a tranquilizer gun. But then the ship gets taken over by a group of Russians, and Snake takes a picture of one of their leaders for Otacon to research for an ID. So the mission is still on, but now you have to slip by guards with AKs, and all you have is a trank gun you have to reload with each shot. So needless to say, you don't want to end up in a gunfight. The good news is, the gun doesn't make any noise, so you don't have to worry about alerting nearby guards if you want to sneak up and put someone to sleep. There are two ways to get into the ship. I suggest going to the left side. There's a bandage under the staircase here, just be aware that there's a guard patrolling the area up ahead. I'll leave it up to your discretion on whether or not you want to sneak by the guards, shoot them, stun them, or distract them with dirty magazines. In the case of these early guards though, I definitely recommend putting them to sleep with the M9. 
the room to maneuver is narrow, and like I said, you're not making much noise. Plus, if you pick up and drop an unconscious enemy, you'll sometimes get some ammo or rations from them. So it's almost always a safe bet. So after getting by the guard, head back here to grab a ration, then come back and open up the hatch to enter the crew quarters. Head down the hallway, wait for the guard to turn his back, and slip into the locker room on the side. There's a ration in this locker, and some M9 bullets in this one. You can also use these lockers as a hiding spot, but if you're in alert mode, they could catch on. There'll be a guard patrolling the area. Head back out and continue down the hallway. You can either put the guard to sleep or let him pass by while you're in the locker room. Then bang a left into the crew lounge. You don't have to confront anyone here if you're careful. You can just slip by and head up the stairs and head east through this door. And now you're in the area you'd be in if you entered the boat from the right side. Then head down into this corridor, put the guards to sleep, grab the ration in this nook here, and continue down the hall. And head this way and up the stairs. Lean against the wall to slip by the security camera, head to the end of the corridor, and crawl into this space to get a ration. Then head back to the halfway point of the hallway and head up the stairs. Head into this room, but be careful, there's a guard and some security cameras in here. Put the guard to sleep and grab the ration in the corner here. Then head back out and down the corridor, but watch out, there are infrared sensors blocking your path here, as Otacon calls to warn you about. Wait for the guard on the other side to emerge and put him to sleep. You can use the cigarettes to see the sensor or shoot the fire extinguisher down, but you don't really need it, all you have to do is crawl until you're past the device. Now head up the stairs and you're on the bridge, where Snake finds out the coordinates to where the ship is headed. Otacon determines that since it's headed out into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it's ready for testing. The conversation is interrupted by the presence of a female soldier outside. Head outside through the hatch this way, and you'll get a cutscene with the woman, whose name is Olga, arguing with her father via radio about staying on board now that her part in the mission is completed. He wants her off the ship, especially since she's pregnant, but she waves the chopper off. Snake puts her at gunpoint, and she tries to sneak a shot at him with a hidden gun sets off the game's first boss battle. The meter underneath her health bar is her stamina. You have to drain that one and put her to sleep since you have only tranquilizers. Her gun is the real deal. You're on opposite sides of the deck and there's a few crates to hide behind. She'll take cover behind some shit too. Keep yourself covered and only pop out to run to the other side for a better shot. Or to fire. Use first person view. Wait until her shots cease before you make your move, and after getting about half of her meter down, she'll shoot the tarp to create an obstruction. You can still get a pretty good angle at her from the left side over here. When you hear her say, take this, she'll throw a grenade, so you'll definitely want to move to another spot at that point. Toward the end, she'll shift the position of the spotlight behind her. You'll still be able to see her, but you won't get a clear shot once you aim in her general direction. So you're going to have to use intuition on this one, but it's not that hard. Or you can just blast the light and problem solved. Once you take her down, you'll have given her enough tranquilizers to cause her child to be born into retardation. You'll take her gun, a USP, but then Snake notices an army cipher surveillance camera flying nearby, which raises his curiosity to say the least. Otacon confirms the ID of the Russian Snake took the photo of, Sergei Gerlukovich, one of Revolver Ocelot's allies, who is mentioned as a potential buyer of Metal Gear Rex from the terrorists in Metal Gear Solid 1. So next objective is to go down into the holes and get the picks of Metal Gear. First grab a ration in this little spot here, then head up the staircase and climb up the ladder for some thermal goggles. Then head back where you came from, grabbing some USP bullets along the way. Crawl under the sensors again, keeping in mind that there's a guard on the other side you'll probably want to take out. Then go back down the stairs, take out the guard and sneak by the camera. Or you can use some chaff grenades you find in the nearby locker here. Go down the stairs, head down the corridor, take out the guard, and head into this room here back into the crew's lounge. There's an optional ration in the northwest corner and some M9 bullets in the northeast corner. Put the guards to sleep and grab them if you need them. Then head east, go down the stairs, grab the stun grenades, and head through the door into the engine room. You'll see the silhouette of Vulcan Raven, but turns out it's just an action figure of him with a flashlight behind him, which you can shoot to make him fire off some small pellets. There's nothing in either of these lockers, except a corpse, but there are some USP bullets up here. Head through this door, take out the first guard right away, follow the linear path down the staircase, take out another guard, and then walk down another set of stairs and you'll see the most incompetent guard of all time staring at this wall. Take him out, head this way, and up here to get a ration. 
Then follow the linear path up to these stairs. Make sure the guard is looking the other way and move north. You'll come to a staircase. If you want, you can head down this way for some optional grenades and some M9 bullets at the end of the hallway with a the guard. Then go back and head up the stairs, take out the guard, and head through this door. A guard will enter the room and scope out the area. Hide in this locker and wait for him to leave. If you take him out, it will arise suspicion, and this is the part where you'll need to take your time. First, grab the USP ammo and head north, but you've got several sensors here rigged with explosives blocking the door. To get by, you'll have to shoot the control units with the flashing green lights to disarm the Semtex. But if you shoot the Semtex, you'll trigger the explosives and the whole ship will go down, so be careful. There are three of them here. One is in plain view from this angle on the right side. The second is back here. You'll need to crawl on the ground to get a clear shot from it. The last one you'll need to climb up on here to see it up in this spot. Once you've taken all three out, head through the door and make your way down the hallway. Grab a ration in the first nook and some USP bullets in the second nook. A guard will be patrolling the area. Wait in the second nook for him to pass and take him out. Move along and another guard will be up ahead, but he's listening to headphones, not paying attention. Put him to sleep and grab the USP bullets. Keep going down this hallway. There'll be more USP ammo along the way and another guard that's slacking off. This one's in and out of napping on the job. Take him out and head through the hatch. Go down the hallway grabbing some USP ammo, and in this nook there's more ammo behind this piping plus a ration. Then you'll get a cutscene where a group of guards that secure the entrance to the hold spot you, and now you've got a gunfight. Use the crates to keep cover and pull out to fire when you're not under attack. And if one of them tosses a grenade, run like hell to another spot. You can only go so far though. If you try to get by this area after the second crate, you'll get shot automatically. There are some bullets and a ration in the back if you need it. When you take them all out, Snake will head through the next hatch, and a guard locks the door behind him. Ocelot comes out and strangely shoots the guard point blank between the eyes. Snake enters the holds where the Commandant is giving his mission briefing speech regarding Metal Gear. There are a shitload of marines in the briefing, so you can't get spotted if you're going to take these pictures. Otacon found out that their transmission is being monitored, so to safely get the photo sent to him, he hacked into a computer nearby for you to send them through instead of the codec. You have seven minutes to get by before the speech ends and you'll be spotted. Climb down the ladders, walk along the back wall, and crawl under the projector. Be sure to walk softly when you're near someone, you don't want to alert them. Do the same when walking by these graded floors. They make noise and you'll be spotted. After heading into the second hold, head right, crawl under the projector, and wait for the guards to shift their attention to the left when the projector switches spots. Then walk softly to the door near the corner. Now you're in the third hold, and Metal Gear Ray is in full view. The computer Otacon set up for you to send the pictures through is right here past the door. So you need four pictures, a front view of Metal Gear, a front right, a front left, and one of the Marines insignia which is printed on Ray. The front right shot you can get immediately, you're right there. Walk softly to the left to get a front view, then move on a little further to get a front left. You can tell by Snake's reactions to the pictures whether or not they're good enough to make the cut. Then head up this way and the Marines insignia is right in front of you. Then head back to the computer and upload the pictures. Right after Otacon gets them, the speech ends and Ocelot makes his entrance, announcing he's going to steal Ray or take it back as he puts it. While the Marines are distracted, Colonel Galukovic sneaks up behind the Commandant and holds him hostage, while Ocelot holds the detonator for the Semtex that's been planted throughout the ship to sink the motherfucker. But Ocelot turns his back on Galukovic, saying he's returning Metal Gear to the Patriots. Galukovic tries to shoot him, but Ocelot shoots both him and the Commandant, Scott Dolph. He then activates the Semtex, causing a mad scramble throughout the ship. Snake confronts Ocelot, but just as he does, Ocelot starts freaking out and becomes possessed by Liquid Snake. It turns out that Ocelot used Liquid's arm to replace his, even though he only lost a hand. Maybe he got gangrene or something and had to get the whole thing removed, I don't know. So Ocelot, or Liquid, in control of Ocelot rather, hops into Ray and takes off with it, while Snake attempts to swim to safety. Ocelot regains control of himself, reporting the successful hijacking and the capturing of photographic evidence of Snake on the scene via the cipher to his contact, who he refers to as Mr. President. So that ends the tanker chapter. The plant chapter is next. It takes place two years after the tanker incident. 
cleanup facility called the Big Shell was set up to clean the crude oil spilled by the tanker. But a terrorist group calling themselves Sons of Liberty, comprised of members of a group called Dead Cell, has taken the President of the United States and several other high-profile people hostage, and raked the Big Shell with C4 threatening to blow it up and cause the crude oil to ignite and cause a huge environmental disaster. And they demand $30 billion. Your mission is to rescue the hostages and disarm the terrorists. Colonel Campbell returns as your commander, but even though he refers to you as Snake, something seems a little off about him. He doesn't sound or act anything like Snake. And once you take control of him, you'll realize he doesn't look or move like him at all either. You've infiltrated strut A of shell 1. There are two shells to the building, each with a central core, and six struts with bridges to connect them. Before the mission starts, Campbell changes your codename from Snake to Raiden as a precaution that he doesn't go into detail about. Raiden's girlfriend, Rosemary, is also on board as a military analyst and to save your mission data. Crawl through the vent here to the other side and grab a ration. Then head up here and grab another one from the locker here. Open up the hatch here and head down the hallway. And you'll notice that every guard in here has been knocked out. So there's obviously another intruder, not counting the Navy SEALs that have been deployed elsewhere on the big shell. Walk over to this machine in the corner called a node. Activating it will give you access to the radar in that area. So you'll need to locate one of these each time you enter a new area, if you want to use the radar. Also on this first one, there's some personal information you can enter. After activating the radar, the guards will start waking up, but the elevator hasn't come down yet, so hide out until it does. And then bypass them and head up to the roof of strut A. Raiden takes off the mask, and now you have visual confirmation that you're clearly not Snake. Campbell tells you that the terrorist leader calls himself Solid Snake, even though Snake apparently died on the tanker when he sank it. So this is a huge development playing as a different character, and the fact that this was kept a secret without leaking before the game's release is pretty amazing. Grab the bandage from off this crate, and crawl through the hole that was ripped in the fence down here. And Campbell calls to tell you that the SEAL team is in the building. Head through the door, and now you're on the upper level of strut A. Sneak by the guard over here so you can get to the node in the corner. Then head through the door in the corner on the left to the AB connecting bridge. While you're there, Campbell patches a communication from SEAL Team 10, who have reached the President, but are immediately under attack before they can rescue him. So you now have to get to Strut B, where the situation is going down. First you have to get across the bridge, and since it's very narrow with a guard on each side, you want to enter the hanging mode, which is a new feature, and shimmy your way across. Just keep your eye on the grip meter. If it runs out, you'll drop. When you get to the end, swing yourself up, as long as there's no guard nearby to spot you, and enter strut B. When you get in, a cutscene begins where you witness the remaining living members of SEAL Team 10's Alpha Team get wiped out by this insanely agile, knife-wielding vampire. He tries to quickly sneak behind Raiden and attack, but a surviving SEAL member fires at him and saves your ass, and the vampire takes off. The SEAL introduces himself as Iroquois Pliskin, although obviously it's Solid Snake. He informs you that the guy you just saw was Vamp, one of the three remaining members of Dead Cell. He gives you a SOCOM pistol and a pack of cigarettes. And you can hear through the radio of a corpse in the room that the Bravo team is under attack on the BC connecting bridge. Pliskin is a little woozy from the blood loss and stays behind, but gives you his frequency, 141.80. Log into the node down here and grab the SOCOM bullets that are right next to it. Then head out of the room and Rose calls to ask you if you remember what day tomorrow is. It's something important, apparently, but Raiden doesn't remember and asks her to dig up some information on Solid Snake. Grab a ration and SOCOM bullets from the lockers here and head through the door to the BC Bridge. When you get there, you'll see that the Bravo team is firing at a member of Dead Cell called Fortune, but the bullets all change direction as they approach her. They can't hit her at all. Vamp takes the President away, and Fortune blasts everyone else to hell, taking out the bridge that connects the BC Bridge to the Shell 1 core and then leaves as well. Campbell tells you that since Bravo Team's been wiped out, you're going to have to take care of the C4, and there's a bomb disposal expert that the Bravo Team brought in at Strut C to help you. So head over the bridge to Strut C, grab some chaffs over here along the way. There are no guards around in Strut C, so simply head into this room and you'll get a cutscene where you meet Peter Stillman, disposal expert. Pliskin is there too, and Stillman tells you about Dead Cell member Fat Man, who is one of Stillman's students, and is now a mad bomber. 
Stillman feels obligated to help stop Fat Man since he partially created him. According to Stillman, there should be one bomb on each strut and concocts a spray that will freeze the bombs and puts it out of commission for at least 24 hours. He gives you and Plisket each a bottle, plus a sensor that will show you the general area of the bombs on your radar and hangs out back, giving you his frequency of 140.25. Plisket has Shell 2 covered, so it's up to you to freeze the bombs on Shell 1. Stillman also gives you a level 1 card that can unlock all security level 1 doors. He wants to come too, but he can't move very well thanks to the prosthetic leg he has thanks to an explosion that killed a bunch of people while he was trying to defuse a bomb. So they tell him to hang out back and give instructions over the codec. So first you want to log into the node, which is in the northwest corner of the room. Then crawl under the table and get a ration. Head out and equip the sensor so you can see whereabouts the bombs are. Head into the women's bathroom here and open this doll for some pentazamine. A drug that will keep your hands from trembling, particularly with a sniper rifle. And I have no idea if I'm even pronouncing that right. Then look at the ceiling above the first stall, equip the bottle, and spray that shit down. You report the bomb to Stillman, who claims that the location of the bomb doesn't make sense, and that Pliskin has reported locations that don't seem like effective demolition points either. One down, five to go. Head into the men's bathroom on the other side and grab some SOCOM bullets from this stall. Then head back to the BC connecting bridge. Just watch out because now there's a cipher floating around. If you get in view of the camera, it'll fire at you and alert guards to your presence. So wait for it to shift down to the lower level and then run across. Once inside strut B, head back into the room where you met Vamp and Pliskin. And you'll notice an open locker near the door. Close it and you'll find the C4 planted against the wall. Freeze it. Two down, four to go. Be careful on your way to the AB connecting bridge. There's a guard in here and one in the hallway. Use the hanging mode again on the AB bridge, and when you get into strut A, sneak down to the southeast corner of the room into the pump room. Head up the staircase, crawl into the piping, and head this way for a ration. Then crawl parallel to this pipe and you'll find the next bomb here. Freeze it and you'll call Stillman, who says that these locations are all wrong, and fears that something's rotting in Denmark, perhaps a trap, but tells you to continue disarming the bombs. Three down, three to go. Head back out of the pump room and go through the door in the northeast corner to the FA connecting bridge. There's a cipher here too, plus a guard. Make sure the cipher and the guard are both patrolling the lower portion of the bridge, and then run across the strut F. This is the warehouse. There are a lot of small rooms that house weapons with various level clearances. You'll be coming back here from time to time for weapon upgrades and shit. For now, you only have a level 1 card, but there's some things you can get from here. First, once the guard here turns his back, head this way around the corner and get a ration. Then head through this level 1 door to get an M9 and some bullets for it. Thankfully in this game, you don't need the card equipped to open the door. There are two guards patrolling the upper level of the warehouse. Take them out with the M9 so the others don't hear it, and grab the SOCOM bullets behind the boxes here. There's one guard on the lower level too. When he's out of the way, stand near the boxes here, go into the hanging mode, and drop. The bomb is planted in this little spot against the wall. Freeze the sucker, and it's four down, two to go. Get out, subdue the guard down here, and grab the SOCOM bullets on this box. Then head south and into this room. Activate the node and grab a ration from this locker, potassiumine from this one, and a cardboard box in the corner. Get on the ground and crawl through the vent to the other side to get a suppressor for the SOCOM and some SOCOM bullets. Climb up the boxes and grab the mine detector here and head out. Head to the other side of the warehouse on the second level and go through the door to the EF connecting bridge. When you get there, you'll get a random call from someone claiming to be Deep Throat, then quickly changes his mind and says he's Mr. X. He warns you that there are claymore mines on the bridge, so use the mine detector. Equip it and run between the mines, but watch out cause there's a guard watching over the bridge. He'll shift his attention from the EF bridge to another spot entirely, so wait for him to turn away before running off. When you get into strut E, sneak by, take out the guard, and walk around the conveyor belts into this gap and take out the other guard. Activate the node in the corner, grab the box from this platform, and crawl under the belt for some stun grenades. Head east and up the stairs to the heliport. You'll get a cutscene where Olga Galukovic is talking to someone on her radio about a cyborg ninja she encountered. So first there was Deep Throat, and now a ninja, but there's no way this could be Gray Fox again, could it? Raiden puts her at gunpoint, but she escapes. Get on the roof, grab the box over here, and sneak by the guards to the Harrier jet in the back. Crawl under it and freeze the bomb that's planted under it. Five down, one to go. 
could report to Stillman and Pliskin patches into the conversation to report that he checked out the bottom of Strut H per Stillman's request. And just as he suspected, there are a bunch of C4s packed into the bottom and are untraceable to the sensor. Pete decides to go check it out to see if the freezing method will work on it. Turns out he was full of shit about losing his leg. He just wanted people to feel sorry for him instead of blaming him for the fuck up. He instructs you and Pliskin to take care of the remaining baby bombs. So head back downstairs and go through the door in the northwest corner to the DE connecting bridge. Make sure the guard is on the lower level and the guy up top is looking back over at the EF bridge and run across to strut D, the sediment pool. Preferably you'll want to get in here from the lower level because the note is right there, so make sure the guard on the bridge isn't right by the stairs and head inside. There are a few guards here, and the entire room is made up of narrow walkways, so take out guards if you have to, just don't get spotted, and head to the other side of the room on the lower level, and open up this hatch to find the last bomb. Spray it down. We report it to Stillman, who is still studying the bomb in Strut H, and figures there's another one in Strut A, which would cause the whole place to go down if both shells lost a strut at the same time. Your sensor can't detect it, but Stillman prepared a sound beacon that will help you find it by listening for the intervals between beeps, which he left in the pantry of Strut C. Since you're in Strut D, you're almost there now, so head up to the door in the west side of the room to the CD connecting bridge. There's a camera right away, so use a chaff to get by unnoticed and take out the guard or simply run by him on the lower level if he's up high. When you get into Strut C, head into the pantry and grab sensor B. Ryden calls to confirm that he got it, and Stillman is at the big bomb in Strut H, and for some reason the detonator is off, at least until Pliskin freezes his last C4. It turns out that the big bombs were designed to activate when the baby bombs went offline, and the countdown is at 400 seconds, so you gotta move your ass to the bottom of Strut A in time. So head from here to Strut B, and then to Strut A. Head up to the roof and take the elevator down. On your way down, Stillman calls, and it turns out that the bombs have a proximity trigger from within a 7 foot radius that speeds up the countdown. Stillman knows he can't escape in time and warns Raiden to keep his distance when spraying the bomb so as not to activate the proximity trigger. Strut H is then blown to hell, along with Stillman. So quickly head back to where you first entered the big shell from, and head to the back of the room and crouch down. And you can see the bomb planted underneath the submarine. Freeze it. You report to Campbell, who tells you now to go back to your main objective of saving the president. So head back to the elevator to the roof of Strut A, but on the way there, Campbell calls you back and tells you that the terrorists killed the hostage in retaliation for neutralizing the bombs, and as you approach the room with the elevator, Fortune comes out and confronts you, whining about how she can't die, asking you to kill her. So a kinda sorta boss battle commences. You can't kill Fortune. You can't even hit her with any of your bullets. All you can do is evade her attacks. So crouch down behind a crate and let her try to blast you with the railgun. If she destroys your barricade, get up and move somewhere else. Don't even bother trying to attack her. After a little while, Campbell will call you to let you know that Fat Man announced he placed a bomb on the heliport and called out Raiden specifically. And the remaining time on the countdown is 400 seconds. Right after the conversation, Vamp enters the room and converses with Fortune. During this, Raiden fires a shot square in Vamp's head. He can't hit Fortune, but he has no time to fuck around and heads up the elevator. Vamp wakes up. Somehow he can't seem to die either. When you get to the roof, equip the mine detector cause there's a landmine here near the doorway. Make your way back to strut E, heading in the direction of strut F. It's quicker that way. When you get there, head back up to the roof where you sprayed the bomb under the Harrier. The new bomb is right out in the open. No big deal. Spray it down and Fat Man shows up, going on about how he'll blow the place up and go down in history as the most infamous bomber of all time. When the battle starts, he'll plant a couple bombs. You have to freeze them before the timer runs out. And there's not much time, so you want to make sure you take care of the bombs before you start shooting Fat Man. Use the sensor to find the locations, or you can follow Fat Man around and get a head start. He'll plant two or three at a time. In between these, he'll skate around and shoot at you. If it weren't for the rollerblades, he'd be a lot easier to catch, but he's pretty quick on the blades for a fat fuck. Shoot him with the soap gun, preferably in the head. It takes a lot more from his health bar. If you knock him down, shoot him in the head when he's on his way up. He gets up slowly, so it's a pretty easy way to put a dent in his health meter. When you drain all his health, he'll lay dying, but activates the biggest bomb in the place, giving you the hint that it's somewhere close by. He dies, and you have a minute and forty to defuse the bomb. 
Drag Fat Man's body a little ways and you'll find the bomb underneath him. Freeze it and Campbell calls, telling you that your focus is back on the president and the other hostages. Pliskin calls in too and says that a chopper is the only means of getting the hostages out and that he has a friend along that can pilot it. The only clue you have on where the hostages are is that they're not on Shell 2 anywhere, according to Pliskin. As you make your way out of the heliport, you'll get a cutscene where Raiden runs into a cyborg ninja who claims he's a messenger sent to help you with information. He gives you the location of one of the hostages named Ames, who is fitted with the same nanomachines as the President and can give you the information on where the President is. He and the other hostages are in the B1 level of the Shell 1 core. The only thing they know about Ames is that he or she has a pacemaker, so you'll need the directional microphone, which is somewhere on the core, to listen to their heartbeats. Since the core is so heavily guarded, you'll need to disguise yourself. So the ninja gives you a terrorist uniform, but you'll also need an AK to look the part. Also, you'll need to pass a retinal scan to gain access to the room where the hostages are. He also gives you a level 2 security card and a cell phone. He also mentions that you need to hurry, because the terrorists have a nuclear weapon, and that the big shell is actually housing the new model of Metal Gear. Campbell says that since there are no other leads, you pretty much have no choice but to try making contact with Ames, and he claims not to have any knowledge of Metal Gear. Where have you heard this before? First order of business is to get an AK, so head back to the warehouse on Strut F. There are now ciphers on the EF bridge, and the landmines are still there, so your best bet is to use some chaff and keep the mine detector equipped. You get into the warehouse, head into the northeast door on the upper level for some C4s and claymore mines. Then head into the southwest room and crawl under the sensors to get an M4 assault rifle and some bullets for it. Use the cigarettes if you want the visual aid of where the sensors are. Then head to the lower level and enter the door right here by the stairs. And you'll get an AK, some ammo for it, as well as some SOCOM ammo. Keep in mind that you have guards to deal with in this area. Then make your way back to the EF bridge. Use chaff again to keep the ciphers at bay and quickly run across the bridge. The panels will fall so don't stop and enter the core. As soon as you get in, Rose calls to confirm that Solid Snake's body has been confirmed dead and buried. And Raiden seems disappointed that the terrorist leader isn't really him. That he's kinda looking forward to meeting the legend. Put on your disguise, equip the AK, and head this way. Don't bump into any guards or you'll be exposed. Grab some M9 ammo from this locker, as well as some chaff grenades here, and activate the node in the corner of the room. Continue down the hallway, head this way, and grab some SOCOM bullets. Follow the linear path until you come to the elevator, and take it down to B2. Head through this door and down the stairs. Grab some M4 bullets and SOCOM bullets from these lockers, and head into the main computer room and grab the directional microphone. And then into this corner for some AK bullets, a cardboard box, and a node to activate. On your way back to the elevator, go to the other side and grab some M9 bullets from this locker and a ration in this little nook, and take the elevator up to B1. You'll see a guard use the retinal scanner to get into the conference hall. This is where Ames is. First head this way and activate the node, and grab a ration from this locker. Then head back the other way, and there'll be guards patrolling in and out of the break room here. There are stun grenades in this locker, and SOCOM bullets in this one. Wait outside the room for one of the guards to come out for a walk, put him in a chokehold, and bring him over to the scanner. You have to make sure he's conscious. Press the action button near the scanner and you'll gain access into the room. So now you'll need to whip out the directional microphone and point it at the hostages to listen to their heartbeats. And the one that sounds different from the rest should be Ames. When you think it's Ames, press the action button to call out to him. Just be aware that the other guards are in here. You don't want to call out to the wrong person while they're in the area. Ames is in the south central portion of the room. Aim the mic at him, call out to him, and a cutscene begins. As you and Ames begin talking, you'll notice that Ocelot is monitoring the conversation, but then you switch to nano communication and he can't hear shit. Ames tells you that the president was moved to the first floor of the Shell 2 core, and the terrorists can't harm him due to the advanced fail-safe measures put in through the heartbeat, blood pressure readings, etc. through the president's nanomachines. The password input to the nuke must be made of his own free will and re-entered hourly. Then Ocelot and the man who claims to be Solid Snake show up in the room nearby, aim the directional mic to listen to their conversation. You'll find out that the password entry has been completed. There's some serious tension and mistrust between Olga and Ocelot, and Ocelot starts having another freak-out attack attempt from Liquid's arm. 
Raiden relays the information back to Ames, who says that the terrorists aren't actually trying to threaten the government with a nuclear strike for any kind of ransom, but rather their objective is to launch the nuke and send Manhattan offline, liberating it, hence Sons of Liberty. Hasselot is on his way over, so Ames gives you a level 3 security card. Equip your AK before Ocelot gets there, and then a cutscene starts. Ocelot confronts Ames, telling him he knows that Ames was sent to keep tabs on the president, who was suspected of treason to begin with. And suddenly Ames starts convulsing and dies from what looks like a heart attack, or perhaps a fox die attack. Ocelot is suspicious of Raiden and rips his mask off, but just before he can kill him, the ninja comes in for the rescue, nearly cutting off Ocelot's hand again, and holds the fort so you can escape. Campbell calls and claims not to know anything about the terrorists being after the launch itself and not the ransom, and tells you to rescue the president, even if he is cooperating with the terrorists. You at least need as much information as you can. So now you've got to get to Shell 2, and Strut D is where you have to go to get to the bridge connecting the two shells. You're in caution mode now as everyone is looking for you and you don't have your mask anymore. When you take the elevator up to the first floor, crouch in the corner and just wait for the caution mode to cease. Then be careful on your way out of the core. There are a good chunk of guards patrolling the area. Now that you have the level 3 card, head back to the warehouse in Strut F to get some more shit. In the northwest room in the upper level, grab the RGP grenade launcher and some ammo for it. In the southwest room of the upper level, you'll find some grenades and SOCOM bullets, and in the west central room of the upper level is a PSG-1 and some bullets for it. Now head back to strut D and enter the north central door and the sediment pool to the connecting bridge of shells 1 and 2. There are Semtex explosives planted all over the place on the bridge, and Pliskin calls in to brief you on shooting the control units and not the Semtex. So now you need your PSG-1 sniper rifle to blast these beasts. Use the pentazamine if you're shaking too much. The first two are right in front of you near the staircase downward. There's another directly in front of you in the center. The fourth and fifth ones are on the wall of strut G on the other side, one on the left and one on the right. The sixth is on the left side of the catwalk. The seventh is in the back toward the right side. The eighth is behind the flag here. Move as far right as you can. Aim and wait for the flag to move so you can see where it is and fire. The ninth is on a cipher that flies around. Be careful not to alert the cipher of your presence. Just shoot the control unit. The final one is actually the closest to you and it took me the longest to find. It's right fucking behind you above the door. Once you take them all out, you'll get a short cutscene where you hear the sensors deactivate. So don't try to cross until you see this happen, in case you're not sure whether or not you've taken them all out. As you cross the bridge, you'll get a call from Pliskin, saying he's got an enemy Kisaka chopper to fly the hostages out of there, and introduces you to the pilot Otacon. They fly past you on their way to rescue the hostages on the Shell 2 core, and you encounter Solid as Snake, who claims to be Solid Snake, and Pliskin returns, telling him to quit impersonating Snake, and Solidus acknowledges Pliskin is actually Snake. Solidus retreats and pops back up in the Harrier, along with Vamp. Pliskin tosses you a Stinger missile launcher to shoot down the Harrier. Grab it and some missiles, and Snake will toss down rations and more Stinger missiles periodically. Aim at the Harrier. It's fast as shit, but as long as you lock it in, the missiles should make contact. It's heat seeking. Watch for when it makes its transitions across the bridge. It'll fire at you. Sometimes it'll hover right above you. Simply aim up and blast his ass. If he gets low and across from you, get away from the missiles and hide behind one of his tanks. And also use the strategy while he's in rapid fire mode. When he sends these explosives, head down to the lower level so you don't get decimated. During this battle, make sure you don't hit the Kasatka. When you finish it off, the Harrier goes down, and Solidus loses an eye in the process, and Metal Gear Ray pops out of the water, sending some explosives that wipe out the bridge, causing Raiden to hang on by a thread. Vamp takes off, running on water, and Solidus hops into Ray and leaves. Raiden crawls back up onto what's left of the bridge, and calls up Snake, confirming that he is indeed Solid Snake, and the body that was ID'd as his was Liquid Snake, since they match up genetically. They heard about the terrorist plan to take over through a reliable source and came out on their own. Also, Otacon's stepsister Emma is being held in the big shell too. The chopper's gonna need repairs before they can save the hostages, so you're gonna have to go back to finding the president. First, go to where the fire is here. You'll get a text message, presumably from Mr. X, advising you to use the coolant spray to put out the fire. So do that and quickly make your way back up before the staircase collapses into the ocean. Then hang off the edge here and shimmy your way over until you're above the pipe. 
drop onto it and slowly walk south and grab another ration. Now if you're feeling daring enough, you can try a flip onto the other side from the pipe here to get some PSG bullets and a suppressor for your AK, but it's very dangerous. Either way, be careful on the pipe. There's bird shit on it, and you don't want slipping on shit to be the cause of your death now, do you? When you get up here, quickly run to the other side. The panels will fall through. Hang off the edge here and drop down. And two guards will come out on the GL connecting bridge nearby. Lean against the wall in a crouching position so you can clear the gap and they won't see you. When you get to the next gap, you're going to have to go into hanging mode, but make sure they're both facing the opposite direction first. Then shimmy your way over and when they're facing away again, swing your way back up and go up the ladder to the perimeter of strut L. There'll be guards behind the windows here. The panels are weak, but you can still crawl across to make it. Just don't stop. Then lean against the wall and crouch down, sliding your way across the ledge and under the extension from the wall. When you stand back up and move on, a guard will take a piss over the edge. Lean against the wall and walk past it without getting pissed on, although it really doesn't make a difference. Then hang off the edge here and drop down. Grab the AK bullets and toss a chaff grenade, as there are ciphers in the area. First run straight ahead to get a ration and run up the stairs, and run to both sides for some PSG bullets, some chaff, and soak on bullets. If you're running low on time with the chaff at any point, toss another one. Then head across the bridge to the Shell 2 core, just make sure you jump over these gaps. When you get inside, you'll hear Olga talking on the radio to Solidus. He tells her Snake is in Shell 1, and she wants to take vengeance on him for sinking the tanker and killing her father. But he tells her the launch comes first. She arranges for the high voltage currents on the floor guarding the president to turn on, gives Solidus a stiff warning about not screwing her over, and leaves. Kimball says to find a remote control missile launcher to fire through the vents and take out the circuit panel. So head left, grab the SOCOM bullets and M9 bullets. A ration in the corner, skip this door for now, and grab some chaff down this way. Continue down the corridor, slip into this room for some M4 bullets and to log into the node. Grab some M4 bullets in the northeast corner here and head into the elevator and take it down to B1. Activate the node on the right and head down the stairs where the rooms are flooding thanks to that explosion from earlier. Swim straight ahead until you hit the wall and grab the Nikita missile launcher. Keep an eye on your O2 gauge. If it's getting low, swim up at one of these air pockets that are represented on the radar screen by a flashy blob. If the oxygen meter runs out, your life gauge will then start to decrease. So now head back to the first floor, slip into the room I told you to skip earlier, and toss a chaff grenade into the room to subdue the camera guns, and grab the Nikita missiles. There are also some back here near the vent where you'll be firing through. Stand on this crate, fire a missile into the vent, and guide it through, taking two lefts on the linear path and then a right into the room the president's in. Send it into the corner where the circuit panel is, just make sure that you don't hit the president or the mission has failed. Head back around and through the door and you'll get a cutscene where you meet President Johnson. President For reasons I still don't understand, the president grabs Raiden's crotch and is surprised to find a package in there, thinking he was a woman. They go into nanocommunication and Johnson admits that he did betray the country and cooperated with the terrorists by inputting the password. His reason behind it was that he was tired of being a puppet for the true rulers of the United States, the Patriots, an extremely top secret committee of 12 men who make all the decisions of the country, including who becomes president. He was going to use Metal Gear as a bargaining chip towards becoming a member of the Patriots, but Solidus wants to destroy the Patriots, which he disagrees with as it would bring global chaos. Solidus, a.k.a. George Sears, was actually Johnson's predecessor, president of the U.S. during the time of Shadow Moses, and was actually behind the incident, employing Ocelot to obtain the data of Metal Gear Rex, which pissed off the Patriots and forced him to resign for different reasons publicly, obviously. It turns out, too, that Metal Gear Ray is not the new Metal Gear model. The entire Big Shell facility is actually a front for the impregnable fortress that extends to the ocean floor, known as Arsenal Gear. It's not just a weapon, but it's designed to control the digital flow of information. The Patriots need to control this to keep themselves under wraps from the general public. He tells you to find Emma Emmerich, Otacon's stepsister and the system programmer for Arsenal Gear. She's being kept in B1 of this core. The president gives you a level 4 card to get there, and a disc with a program in it that Emma will know how to install that disrupts the control functions between GW and Arsenal Gear. The president then tells you to kill him, 
to at least delay the nuclear strike, as the final check for his vital signs could come at any time. During the struggle, Ocelot shoots him intentionally and takes off, which seems odd considering they needed him alive to launch. Grab the SOCOM bullets here, and on your way out of the room, you have a codec conversation with Campbell, who tells you to honor the President's last order and find Emma to help put a stop to the terrorist plan to take Arsenal gear. Snake calls in too, telling you that he also knows about Arsenal gear and tells the story about how they were lured into the tanker specifically to be framed for the intentional sinking of the tanker, which was designed to create the big shell, a smoke screen whose real purpose was to camouflage the development of Arsenal gear. So now you've got to find Emma. First head downstairs back to B1 and hop in the water. Take your first right until you get to the T intersection and swim left and go straight ahead. Bang a left and watch out for the bombs. Then take a quick right and follow the linear path until you get to a hatch. When you come up for air, Otacon will call you to throw a little monkey wrench into your rescue plan of Emma, or as he likes to call her, E. It turns out she's afraid of water. And that's a big fucking problem because the whole goddamn place is flooding. It turns out she almost drowned when she was a kid. Her father did die in the incident, and Otacon didn't rescue her even though the pool was in full view from his room, and he hadn't seen her since. So once you open the hatch, Peter Stillman's corpse comes floating out of the room, which is chock full of debris from the explosion earlier. There's a PSG, one T, and some ammo within the debris, but it's just a sniper rifle that fires tranquilizers. You don't need that shit. Just swim to the other side of the room, open up the hatch, swim up for air and a ration, and then continue down the path and head through the level 4 door. You'll find Vamp meditating on water. He mentions that killing the president didn't prevent the nuclear strike, as Arsenal Gear is equipped with a purified hydrogen bomb, and claims that Dead Cell was used as a scapegoat to cover up the mass murders of civilians, and during the conversations you'll hear the announcement that Arsenal Gear is ready to go into operation. And then the battle commences. First off, do not ever, for the life of you, fall into the water. Because of the high oxygen content due to the byproduct of the microbes or some shit. Vamp, on the other hand, can swim in it without a problem, due to his seemingly superhuman abilities. He'll pop out and usually walk along the top level, where you can't get to, and wield knives at you. He's got the agility of a cat, so keeping up with where he is isn't easy. You have to be quick. He'll also sometimes stay at the lower level and walk slowly in your direction dodging bullets with pirouettes and charging at you with his knife. I would use the RGB on him for this. You can also use it for when he's up high, but you only get one shot at a time, whereas the M4 you can at least recover if you miss. The M4, however, doesn't do nearly as much damage. Once you get about three quarters of his life out, he'll get pissed. He'll throw this orange star thing. If it lands close enough to you, you'll be frozen in place, although you can still turn your body and use your weapon. You just won't be able to run away. From here, he'll either do his usual attacks from a distance, or charge at you. If you hit him, it'll unfreeze you. I suggest the RGB here, too. He'll leave himself open for attack, and be prone to serious damage. When you take him out, he'll sink into the depths of the water. It's actually a very linear path. Just take your first left, otherwise you'll hit a dead end. When you surface, go through the door, activate the node, and pick up the pentazamine. Emma's hiding out in one of the lockers. If you smack the right one, you'll hear her shudder, which is this one right here. As Raiden opens up the door, Emma pisses herself. I guess it runs in the family. At first, she's apprehensive about leaving because she's afraid of the water, but after some convincing, Raiden manages to talk her into holding on to him while he swims them both out. So swim back the way you came in, only this time you have to keep your eye on Emma's O2 gauge. She can't hold her breath as long, so you'll have less time underwater. If she drowns, it's game over. When you get to the chamber where you fought Vamp, you'll take a break. Campbell tells you to get to Shell 1 by the oil fence at the bottom of Strut L, thanks to the connecting bridge being destroyed. Then Raiden reports to Snake and Otacon that Emma's okay, and he'll meet up with them. He patches Emma over to Otacon, and they stop bickering over why she's involved in weapons development and whatnot. Snake intervenes, since there's no time to waste on this bullshit. Before you head into part two of your swimming escapade, Emma tells you what she knows about Arsenal gear, that it's a censorship system put in place by the Patriots to control information globally to prevent themselves from being exposed and giving them the ability to control historical content. So swim back the way you came in to the elevator, but Emma's not only afraid of water, she's afraid of bugs too and won't go any further, so spray them with the coolant until they scurry into the vents. You'll have to hold her hand by holding down the action button while standing near her. 
You won't have any items or weapons equipped during this time. Take her to the first floor and be ready to let her go. There are five guards between the elevator and the door to the connecting bridge, and you'll move too slow with her to sneak by. So when you get to a spot where there's a guard, let her go and take them out, preferably with a gun that's silenced. On the KL bridge, there are two ciphers. Equip the PSG-1 and shoot them down. There's also a guard on the bridge. Blast him too. Then head south, put out the fire with the coolant spray, and head for strut L. Unfortunately, it's security level 5, a card you don't have, but it turns out Emma does have it. So head in, grab the SOCOM bullets, and wipe out the two guards in this room. Then head south and open up the hatch and head in. Right in at Emma, climb down a ladder to the bottom of strut L, and have to cross the pontoon bridge over to strut E. But it's only sturdy enough for one person, so Emma has to walk alone, and you're gonna have to cover her with the PSG-1, and Snake volunteers to head over to the strut E side and help out too. Grab the thermal goggles and equip them. First order of business is to take out the Claymore mines that are on the bridge. You don't want Emma to walk across that shit. There'll be some guards patrolling the catwalks of the struts, so take out any that are in Emma's vicinity and watch out for ciphers too. They'll be in the area as well. You'll probably want to pop a few pills of pentazamine throughout the duration of the sequence. She'll slowly make her way across, keep her covered, and when she's about halfway across the second bridge, Snake calls to let you know he's taking position on strut E, and you can call him whenever you need help. When she gets about halfway across the third bridge, Vamp pops out of the water and grabs Emma, putting her at knife point. Pop a pill, aim with the PSG-1, and shoot him in the head only when he shifts his position to take a stab at her, which will free up a space to blast him. After a few shots, she'll knock him back into the water and Emma collapses, bleeding. Snake moves in, wipes out the remaining ciphers, and carries her back to Shell 1, telling you to get there as soon as you can, as Emma doesn't look to be in good shape. Raiden crosses the bridge, so you'll start out in strut E when you take control of him. You have 300 seconds to make it to B2 of the Shell 1 core. With everybody aboard Arsenal gear, there aren't any guards around, although there's one in strut E wearing headphones, I guess he couldn't hear the announcement. You'll have no problem running past him to the EF bridge. There are ciphers on this bridge, use chaff or shoot them down. I prefer the latter, cause you're gonna have to lean against the railing and walk along the edge since the panels all fell off and you don't want the ciphers to wake up before you get across to Shell 1. Head to the elevator. Just throw on some thermal goggles to avoid the claymores that have been recently placed, or you can just head north and not have to worry about any of them. When you get down to B2, you'll see that M is in rough shape, but she managed to set up the computer to GW, so all you need to do is pop in the disk that the president gave you, which is actually the program Emma wrote. But as the virus upload reaches 90%, the connection is cut and everything crashes. Patriots presumably altered the cluster after the virus was written. Just as Emma and Otacon reconcile their sibling rivalry, Emma dies in his arms, and he admits aloud that his father didn't die by accident, he killed himself after discovering that Otacon was actually banging his stepmother, Emma's mom. Once again, a dark page in the Emmerich family history is written, and once again, a female close to Otacon dies. Otacon understandably breaks down, and Snake helps put him back together, as Arsenal is ready for launch. They need him to fly the chopper and get as many hostages out as they can, while Raiden and Snake attempt to infiltrate Arsenal. Since it's seemingly impossible to destroy Arsenal, the only realistic option is to take out Solidus and company. When Raiden asks Snake how they plan to get inside Arsenal, Snake calls out for the ninja, who turns out to be Olga, and knocks Raiden out. As Arsenal is about to take off, the big shell, no longer necessary, is wiped out. You'll awaken inside Arsenal, completely naked and strapped to a gurney, similar to the torture room in Metal Gear Solid 1. Although Ocelot says he can't find any information on Raiden, Solidus claims he does recognize him now, as he was Raiden's adoptive father trained him on the battlefield, raising him as one of the most accomplished child soldiers ever, earning the nickname Jack the Ripper. Solidus will choke you with one of his tentacles on his weird-ass suit. Press triangle repeatedly to avoid suffocation. They leave you restrained to plot out their launch situation, and although Olga is standing right there, she switches to the codec to avoid suspicion, and lets you know that she's been ordered by the Patriots to assist you. It turns out the Patriots have her child hostage, and will kill the kid if you fail your mission. As much as it pained her, she betrayed her troops for the sake of her child. 
He joined forces with Snake after finding out that he wasn't the one responsible for Sergei's death, and that he actually helped her to escape the tanker. She also mentions that Raiden's purpose to the Patriots is not to take out Solidus. The ultimate goal is the S3 plan, which she doesn't have time to get into. She gives you a fist to the gut, I guess to help keep herself concealed, and leaves the room to release your restraints elsewhere for the same reason. Rose calls to ask if everything Solidus said about him being a child soldier was true, which he admits. Then she gets all sympathetic with him, he says it haunts him, he didn't want to tell her about it, he's afraid of the fucking dark, and other such crap. Olga releases you, and you have to cup your junk and find Snake who has your gear at the hangar ahead, according to Olga. Log into the node, and move on to the next room. As you get in, Campbell calls, strangely ordering you to take out Solidus and recover Arsenal gear intact. That Snake was not a factor in the simulation, that this is a role-playing game, and to turn the power off, because you've been playing for long enough. What the fuck is this about? Obviously you don't want it to actually turn the power off. I know someone who did the first time they played it though. Head up the staircase on the east side and make your way north. You can't attack, so you've got to sneak by the guards. Wait for an opening and sneak by whenever there's one up ahead. And watch out for the surveillance camera about halfway up. Stay close to the wall and slip under. Keep heading north until you get to the door in the northeast corner on the lower level. There's a staircase across the way from it. As you're heading up this hallway, you'll constantly be getting extremely bizarre calls from Campbell. I was a North American fall webworm in my past life. Oh, those were the good old days. What were you in your former life? I think this one's the personal favorite of most. I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in flap jaw space with the tuning fork does a raw blink on Harry Carey Rock. I need scissors. 61. So yeah, with the exception of the first couple calls, they're all optional. So you don't need to slow yourself down by listening to them, but I have to every time. It's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, once you get into the next room, grab the ration at the bottom. You can't go through either door, and for a little while nothing happens for whatever reason. Finally, you get a call from Rose, who admits she was a spy sent by the Patriots to hook up with Raiden as a way to get more information on him before recruiting him. She says she really does love Raiden, though, and they have another argument. At the end of the transmission, she says she's pregnant, but her voice gets all deep and fuckety. Snake shows up, gives you your gear, and tells you they had to knock you out so they could get into Arsenal. Snake gives you a sword from Olga, and you get a chance to practice the controls for the four moves. A lunge, a rotating cut, a horizontal and vertical slice, and a guard. When you're done, Raiden asks Snake for advice on what he should be fighting for. Snake advises him to fight for the future, find something to believe in, and pass it on to the next generation. Otacon calls in to confirm that he got all the hostages out safely, and Raiden asks him to look into the weird transmissions from Campbell. The next hallway has a bunch of guards. Use the crates for cover, and pop out to blast them whenever they momentarily cease fire. Follow Snake as you make your way through. He'll toss you rations and ammo along the way, and if you run out, you can still use the sword. You can't let Snake die or the mission has failed, and obviously you can't die either. After you kill them all and head into the next room, Otacon calls you to tell you that the colonel you've been talking to the whole time is actually an AI in connection with GW. The virus upload has started to take some effect, which explains why he was talking like a fucking crackhead. Then the colonel calls to tell you that they've taken Rose hostage, but Snake quickly assures Raiden it's a trap since he's not real, and Raiden starts freaking out because Rose might not actually exist either, and his whole past might be memories of events that never even happened. When you enter the next room, some sword-wielding guards will show up. It's a wide open area, so this is simply a matter of taking out everything in sight. Just don't be fooled by the game over screen popping up. It's just trying to fuck with you. Notice it says fish and mailed. When you're done, Fortune shows up, calling out Solid Snake for killing her father, Scott Dolph. Although he actually did. Snake tells you to go on ahead while they fight. When you get into the next room, Solidus claims that you're a puppet for the S3 plan, Solid Snake Simulation, a program designed to build the perfect soldier modeled after Solid Snake, which is what all that VR training was for, and then unleashes a barrage of Metal Gear rays after you. You'll fight three at a time, although they'll take turns attacking you. Their attacks are very similar to Rex from Metal Gear Solid 1. 
If you're far away, they'll unleash missiles. If you're close, they'll hit you with a laser. And if you're in between, they'll fire a machine gun. The latter does the least amount of damage, so you'll want to stay in medium range, leaning closer to being far away since you don't want to get squashed. If the missiles come after you, start running. Don't even try shooting, unless you're already aiming at the target. Once in a while, they'll also fire missiles head-on. Do a running jump to avoid them as they swoop in. The head of the Metal Gears is your target, but you preferably want to hit their knees first. It won't drain any health, but if you give them a headshot while they're slumped over, it'll do more damage. Every time you get a shot in, run and find a new spot to attack from. When you take out five rays, a cutscene begins. Raiden is cornered by the remaining rays, and Olga shows up to hold them over while you get away. She can't have you die for the sake of her child. Solidus pops out, grabs her by the throat with one of his tentacles, and pops her in the head. Just as Solidus is about to engage in battle with Raiden, the Metal Gear rays start acting crazy, as GW's AI is acting up, sending Arsenal on an emergency ascent course. Solidus takes out the rest of the active rays and grabs Raiden by the throat as Fortune shows up with a handcuffed snake. Things aren't looking good right now. Solidus knocks you out and you awaken on top of Arsenal gear. Hit triangle repeatedly again as he chokes you. As Fortune is about to leave to take care of something, Solidus tells her he knows that she had planned to hijack Arsenal and that he was actually going to give Arsenal to her to begin with, only because it's not quite as impenetrable as promoted. His real objective was to get a list of the names of the Patriots, which is contained in GW, so he could find them and take them out, while Arsenal gear, piloted by Fortune, would be the diversion. Ocelot interrupts to reveal that the S3 plan was not the VR training, but this whole terrorist incident was a scripted recreation of Shadow Moses to set up a training program that can shape any soldier into the caliber of Solid Snake. Fortune tries to shoot Ocelot, but he whips out his revolver and shoots her. Turns out the magic force field around her was nothing more than a device developed by the Patriots, which Ocelot has running as Fortune and Solidus can't hit him with their bullets. Ocelot hops into one of the rays and tries to wipe everyone out since they're no longer needed for the exercise. He fires a bunch of missiles at everyone, but Fortune gets up and miraculously and unexplainably, she redirects their fire, as if she really does have a force field of some kind. Then she drops dead. As Ocelot is about to fire another round of missiles, Liquid takes possession of him again and reveals to Snake that he was the one who leaked information to him about Arsenal to bring him there, since his presence is what triggers him to take over Ocelot. Liquid sends Arsenal on its collision course and takes off with Ray to take down the Patriots while Snake dives in pursuit of him. Arsenal crashes into Manhattan and Raiden and Solidus land atop Federal Hall. Solidus reveals that he was the one who killed Raiden's biological parents, and he can still obtain the info he needs on the Patriots by killing Raiden, as the info is inside his nanomachines. The AI Campbell and AI Rose call up, and explain that the S3 plan isn't Solid Snake simulation, but selection for societal sanity. That their plan to control information isn't to censor, but to create context, filter out unnecessary information that's slowing down the evolution of the human species, and actually causing it to regress. They order you to take out Solidus, or Olga's child will be killed, and so will Rose, who is wired the same way, so it's one last battle to the death. Your only weapon is the sword. Keep a relatively short but safe distance from him, and circle around him. As the green shit forms around him, he'll lunge out with his tentacle in an attempt to choke you out. Keep running to avoid this and attack immediately. You can get a couple shots in. He'll also do an overhead vertical slice with both swords, which he's pretty slow with so you can see it coming pretty easy. Run around and attack. Also watch out for a combination attack with the swords. He'll sometimes fire off a series of small missiles, run off to the side to avoid them. His other attack is a dash move that will leave a trail of fire. Just make sure you're not standing in front of him or you'll get caught in the fire and take some damage. Stay fleet of foot at all times. About halfway through the fight, He'll discard the tentacles and add a couple of extra dashes to his normal routine in different directions. These are not easy to predict. Keep your distance and try to react as best you can, running off to the side when it looks like he's gonna dash straight ahead of you. When you drain all of his health, he'll stagger around and fall off of Federal Hall and die at the base of the George Washington statue. Snake shows up, telling Raiden that it's up to him to decide what to pass on to the future, to start a clean slate and choose his own legacy. 
Raiden takes off his dog tags, which has the information you entered into the first node earlier in the game, and tosses them, starting his new slate. Snake also mentions that he'll find Olga's child, as long as Raiden stays alive, since his vital signs are wired to the Patriots. Liquid went after the Patriots, and Snake put a transmitter on Ray, but he feels that the Patriots gave us a lot of phony location as to where they are. But they have a lead with the virus disc. The one they had given him earlier was a fake. It contains the list of the Patriots' names somewhere in the source code, because it was written to erase their names from GW. But Snake tells Raiden that he has to catch up with some other people, and of course he's talking about Rose. Although nothing is revealed about whether or not she really was a spy or anything about their past, they decide to find out about their futures together. And Raiden recalls that April 30th, the day she kept pestering him about whether or not he remembered, was the anniversary of the day they met. They hint that he proposes to her, and the credits roll. After they finish rolling, you'll get some bonus audio, like in the last game. Otacon successfully extracts the 12 names of the Patriots from the disc, but discovers that they're all dead and it happened about 100 years ago. So that concludes Metal Gear Solid 2. The game is brilliant, but I did mention that I had some rifts with the story aspect, so now that we've gone through the whole thing, here I go. I'll start by saying that it's a good premise, and the general overview of the entire plot is good, but there are issues sprinkled throughout. One of the big payoffs to Metal Gear Solid 1's story were the gripping plot twists. Metal Gear Solid 2's plot twists start tying themselves in knots, especially when you get into Arsenal gear and everything starts going all over the place. And there seem to be way too many of these big revelations all at once with close-up shots of the surprise party. It's overload. Upon a first-time playthrough, the whole thing's pretty convoluted. You'll need to play through it again to put the pieces together a little bit better. And although everything does come together and there are no plot holes, there are too many parts that are just unnecessary, like Fortune being able to deflect the bullets. This never gets explained even in later games. It should have just been simply cut. The cutscenes are also much longer, which may turn some people off. I have no problem with that at all, but way too often the conversations are transferred to the codex screen, which is visually monotonous. If you didn't notice by my tone, I also was not a fan of the interactions between Raiden and Rose. Although I would have preferred Snake being the playable character throughout the game, I didn't hate the idea of bringing a new character to control while keeping Snake the lead character. It's a very ambitious move. But Raiden was just fucking annoying and whiny. Add in the overly long dramatic conversations he has with Rose while he's in the middle of a fucking mission to save the world, it doesn't take long for this to get irritating. And I'm a patient man. Perhaps the biggest reason why I felt that the story was a bit of a letdown was the fact that the expectations were very high coming off of its predecessor. Now I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the movie aspect of this game at all, I know it sounds like I have a lot of gripes about it, but I should stress the fact that these gripes aren't colossal negatives that bring everything down. The story is generally enjoyable, but significantly weaker in comparison to the other three games in the series. If you summarize the sequence of events, then the story is actually great, it just needed to be told better, preferably cut out some of the unnecessary details mainly. The whole concept of the Patriots is the shining moment, a metaphor for the real life powers that be. Not to get all political, but seriously, our freedoms are being stripped of us and information is controlled. The far-fetched storyline here is not far removed from what's actually going on. When you break it all down, Metal Gear Solid 2 is a terrific sequel. Yeah, I know I had some shit to say about the storyline, and yeah, that is a very vital part of this franchise, but it's still an excellent game. There were a lot of unanswered questions coming out of this one, and we wouldn't find out any of that until seven years later when the direct sequel, Metal Gear Solid 4, came out. The next entry in the series, Metal Gear Solid 3, is a prequel, but we'll get to that one another time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.